everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. When NVIDIA launched the GeForce GTX 980 and 970 just a couple of weeks ago, they actually spent some time to brief us on the mobile versions of these parts as well, but the NDA was a little bit longer than that and we didn't actually have hardware until recently. So now we're able to actually talk about the GTX 980M and the GTX 970M. Uh, the, the 980M and the 970M are the mobile variants based on the same 28 nanometer Maxwell GPU. Uh, their performance is obviously a little bit lower than the desktop class parts, as is always the case. The GTX 980M, for example, has 1536 CUDA cores, while the GTX 980 on the desktop part has 2048. So you're talking about a 20 25% drop in potential performance there. Uh, clock speeds are also a little bit lower. The base clock goes from 1126 on the desktop part to 1038 on the notebook part, uh, which is actually not a very significant drop. The only other significant performance delta is really on the memory speed. Uh, on the desktop parts, that memory runs at 7 gigahertz, and on the uh, mobile parts, we're looking at 5 gigahertz. So that's kind of where your performance differences come from. Now, what we have here next to me is this is the first uh, sample of a notebook using the GTX 980M that we've had in. This is the uh, MSI GT72 Dominator Pro. It's a really, really nice notebook. We're not doing a notebook review today. Steve, our, our dedicated no notebook reviewer, is actually going to do his normal write-up on this machine. So you'll see all the normal benchmarks and analysis and you know uh, discussion about the pros and cons of the notebook there. All I want to really focus on today is the performance of the GPU itself. Uh, if you look Look at um, the AC plugged in maximum performance of this card. That's when you're going to get the best performance is when your notebook is plugged in. Uh, you're looking at uh, a graphics card that is within five to ten percent of the performance of a desktop GTX seven. Uh, I'm sorry, GTX nine seventy, and is actually faster, sometimes as much as 15 or 20 percent, than a desktop class GTX 770, which you know is the same as a desktop GTX 680 as well. So you're getting a lot of gaming performance here, and again, this is a 1080p monitor, so this GPU is not going to have any problems rendering your games at 1920 by 1080. Battlefield 4, we measured over 65 frames per second uh, at 1080p at the Ultra preset. Bioshock Infinite, over 130 frames per second. Like this, this is going to have enough to run basically any game, uh, even Crisis 3, really, at its top image quality settings at 1080p. Uh, what is an interesting discussion, though, is how these this GPU acts and how the system acts when it's on battery power, right? So um, remember that when it's plugged into the wall through an AC adapter, this system has the capability to draw up to about 230 watts. And in my testing, we saw that range between 200 and 210 watts of power draw. That's not just for the GPU, it's for the entire system. Now, if you remember with our desktop release of the GTX 980, we bragged about and we and we discussed how, how awesome it was that NVIDIA was able to get so much performance out of a 165 watt TDP GPU. And that energy efficiency, that efficiency uh, performance per watt actually comes into play more so on the notebook than it does on the desktop, where you have you know, bigger power supplies and lots of PCI Express power connectors you can deal with. On a notebook, it's more important. So able to run 230 watts, that is a quad-core hyper-threaded processor with a GTX 980, or I'm sorry, GTX 980M, yeah, uh, is actually pretty impressive. But when you disconnect the power and you want a game on battery only, you're actually limited to how much total power draw you can get out of the system uh, to about 100 to 110 watts, actually. So uh, the result is performance uh, is going to downclock some. It's going to downscale. Your GPU is going to clock down some. Your CPU is going to scale down some. And as a result, your performance is, is going to differ as well. We actually did some, some testing where we looked at, okay, what's our performance when we're plugged in? What's our performance at those same settings if we just run on a battery versus what about NVIDIA Battery Boost, the, the technology that NVIDIA claims kind of addresses all these issues. Um, for example, we ran Battlefield 4 um, uh, with this setup, right, where uh, we'd run it on AC and then on battery. And what we saw was, even though we got performance at about 65 frames per second, when it was plugged into the wall, performance on battery was about like 37 or 38 frames per second at the same image quality settings. So you're getting a significant downscaling in clock speed and a significant downscaling in performance as well. Uh, we tested this on Battlefield 4 and Crisis 3. You should check it out in the, in the full review we have linked in this video. Um, but what NVIDIA has done to kind of address these issues is they have two technologies. They have GeForce Experience and they have Battery Boost and they kind of work together. Battery Boost is really was originally intended as a 
a, a technology that will enable the, the user to get more battery life out of their machine while they're gaming, right? And it did so by limiting your frame rate uh, and doing some other kind of weird voodoo things inside the system that they didn't really want to talk about. GFE, what it does now is it has, when you're on a mobile setup like this, it will let you have two different profiles for each game, one for when you're on battery and one for when you're on AC power. And the benefit to that is that the, the optimized settings when you're on uh, battery power are lower image quality settings, but they are tuned perfectly for how the GPU acts when it's only running at, you know, inside that 100 to 110 watt thermal limit that it has for the entire system. So what you'll see is in our graphs, uh, we have the 980M on AC, the 980M running on battery, and then we have the 980M with battery boost enabled. And that is actually uh, battery boost technology and different image quality settings. And when you see that, you'll actually see a, a consistent um, 30 frames per second frame rate really all across the board and that is because they have limited the frame rate to 30 they're trying to maintain right at that level and they have optimized image quality settings to hit that point within the thermal envelopes and within the power limits that they are forced upon by you know running on a battery uh, there is a slider in there some people are going to say that 30 frames per second is too low you can drag that slider up to you know 40, 50, 60 frames per second, whatever you want to do. The problem with that is that in some instances you'll find that the GPU, uh, when it, it will actually run at a higher frame rate the majority of the time with those lower image quality settings. However, there will be an instance where the GPU is trying to draw too much power. And when it does that, it has to downclock itself. And you'll see this kind of oscillation back and forth of clock speeds, high and low, and you'll see an oscillation of frame rates then, high and low. And the result is kind of a stuttery, uh, unsmooth, unsatisfactory gaming experience. So NVIDIA has really targeted the 30 FPS mark for all these games to work with Battery Boost. Uh, and in, in my opinion, it was actually a, a pretty good experience. So. Um, Again, this is early testing for us. We'll have a full review of the GT72 from MSI pretty soon. Uh, but if you are interested in this, you really need to go to PCPro.com and look at our performance metrics, right? We do uh, our whole, whole gamut of benchmarks on the 980M uh, with AC power, right? It's optimal performance, how most people should be using a gaming laptop. You don't really want a game on battery, but if you have to, you can, that type of thing. Uh, and then check out those two uh, collections of benchmarks that we've looked at that compare Battlefield 4 and Crisis 3 running on battery in a couple different configurations versus running on uh, AC. And, and you'll see some significant differences and some pros and cons to what NVIDIA has done either way. So make sure you go to PCPro.com and check out that full write-up. Uh, we've spent a lot of detail on that. And check back soon as I know Steve will have a review of the GT72 from MSI to go along with it. Thanks, guys.